Hi, good afternoon, everyone, or good evening, or good morning, wherever you are in the world. Uh, my name is Kate Orff, and I'm the director of the Urban Design Program here at Columbia University. And we're really excited to virtually meet all of you. Um, we know we have people calling in or, or uh, from around the world, many, many different countries. Um, and our goal for today is really to try to answer some questions that you've submitted and to give you um, a broad brush outline of the, Colum uh, the Columbia Urban Design Program, which we're really excited to share with you. So um, I'm also joined by David Smiley, our assistant director of the program, and three students who will be introducing themselves once we kick it over to question and answer. And together, we will try to paint the picture for you of what it's like here at Columbia, and because we're really excited um, to have you join us here. Um, everyone on this uh, webinar is an admitted student. We want you to come to Columbia. We're very excited to welcome you here and see you in New York in late May and June. Um, and so the program is um, um, uh, one of a suite of programs at Columbia University's GSAP, which is the Graduate School of Architecture, Planning, and Preservation. Um, this is a photograph of Avery Hall um, in, here in Manhattan, where we work. Um, it is a, a desk photograph, too. There are a number of questions about the workload for um, com incoming students. And um, of course, this is an architecture school, many lights on uh, during the evening hours. But Avery Hall is, is just a really um, dynamic place to be, multiple programs housed within this one building. Um, and we are really um, located in the heart of Manhattan. Uh, and really being in Manhattan and New York is kind of cuts to the heart of the, the urbanism and the way that we approach uh, urban design here at the school. So, you know, many of you have backgrounds in architecture or landscape architecture. You will have a, a bachelor's degree um, if you are admitted to this program. It is a post-professional degree. But what's exciting uh, for us in the urban design program is kind of this translation between what is the professional practice of landscape versus architecture versus urban design. This is a picture from Seoul, Korea, very top-down, developer-driven, uh, kind of planning-driven notion of, of urbanism. And we combine uh, this kind of look at these very top-down processes together with very bottom-up and spontaneous urban uh, processes. So this is an image from a studio uh, that we did in Kisumu, Kenya. So urban design combines these tools and toolkits and ways of seeing the world from, and spans formal to informal processes. I think importantly is when you come to the Columbia Urban Design Program, we are not going to tell you what urban design is. Rather, we position the program as kind of a stance, a stance of engagement with the potential of the city and a stance of working together and with each other to help advance kind of broad front um, urban prerogatives. Urban design does not happen in a vacuum. It does not um, get accomplished by one person working alone uh, in a room. It, uh, it happens and uh, through complex uh, conversations that engage people across stakeholder units, across owners, across um, uh, municipalities, different levels of government, et cetera. So really, really through our coursework and our pedagogy, advance that. Um, at the urban design program, we will also not um, tell you what is the city. In fact, um, uh, we look at the city through a much wider lens. This is an image also of uh, Kisumu around this uh, corner of this hill is um, Lake Victoria. And you can see that the edges of that city um, also encompassing a broader operational urban landscape. So we really look at urban systems and natural systems together when we think about um, the, the process, this ongoing process of urbanization. Importantly, though, we are based here in New York City, and New York City is our lab. Um, the first semester uh, program, um, in the, the first semester of the program in the summer um, is really very much focused on the five boroughs of New York City. And I just can't state enough how important and exciting our New York context is to this learning environment. Um, New York City is an incredibly dynamic place, very um, you know, well managed, has a lot of innovation in housing, innovation in urban landscape, innovation in waterfront design. And so there's so much to be learned just simply from being um, here at, in New York with our incredible faculty and working alongside your fellow students and the faculty um, and kind of learning from the environs that is New York. 
So a couple of words on the urban design program and how we try to situate ourselves uh, within um, uh, GSAP itself, uh, which, which are shown this sort of image, uh, the, the planning, uh, architecture, historic preservation, and real estate are the programs within GSAP on the right of the slide that we collaborate with quite a bit. And then the programs on the left of the slide are um, programs that are characterized are at Columbia writ large, say SEPA, which is our School of Policy, the Mailman School of Public Health, the Earth Institute, and the Mont Doherty Earth Observatory, and the School of Engineering outside of GSAP are all schools um, within Columbia that we have exchange with. So we really see urban design as this bridge between the interior and the exterior of the school. Um, and, um, and many of these sort of um, qualities, or we have invited lectures, um, seminars, et cetera, uh, that help to sort of bridge these gaps um, and enable us to look more synthetically um, and in an integrated way at this phenomena of the urban. So that kind of covers the two left and right sides of this image. Um, on the top and bottom of the diagram, you can see how we also aim to bridge scales. So infrastructure, ecology, and built fabric are these broader systemic scales of the urban that we engage in the program. But of course, um, we need to understand how these systems manifest spatially and directly um, in the sort of human scales and spaces where we live. So how, it's this really reciprocity between systems and kind of cultural public spaces that we try to push our students to advance work. So we really try to um, bridge um, this type of thinking and this way of, of, of acting within the university. So now I just have a couple of um, slides before we um, kick it over to question and answers that tries to describe the coursework and the student experience um, that you'll have when you come here in late May uh, to start off with the summer, um, the summer uh, semester. So as you probably are well aware, um, the MSAUD program, which is the Master of Science in Architecture and Urban Design program, is a one calendar year program and it commences in, in the summer semester. So you will be arriving here in late May and kicking off your summer semester in, uh, that takes place in June, July, and the beginning uh, two weeks of August. Um, and um, in that summer semester, it's very much focused on the five boroughs of New York City. So you'll be deeply enmeshed in understanding the five boroughs. You'll be learning the tools of the trade, if you will, in terms of urban theory, um, design, software, narrative process, site, and program. Um, and um, so that um, summer semester is really the sort of intro, getting everybody up to speed, and um, trying to establish really a baseline uh, through which to talk about the city that then can be applied in your next two semesters. The fall semester um, is, commences in September after you have a nice uh, healthy break at the end of August. And in the fall semester, we study the regional scale. You can see how we're beginning to scale up here. Um, and in the fall semester, um, our studios are really focused on the Hudson Valley, which is the larger region to the north of uh, New York City um, and, um, and encompasses this sort of broader region around the Hudson River. And in that semester, uh, this regional scale is interrogated alongside questions of justice, public health, um, economy, historic preservation, uh, and mapping. And, and you can see to the top of the slide, um, that particular fall semester uh, exists, coexists with um, a, an academic initiative called the Hudson Valley Initiative, which I will describe in a minute. And then finally, the final semester uh, is in the spring, and that commences um, mid-January with a study trip, usually in the first two weeks of January. And the spring semester, we broaden the lens again and begin to look at the phenomena of the global. What does that mean for global cities? And we focus on issues of climate, resilience, equity, social capital, uh, fabric, and informality. And that semester coincides and is conjoined with um, a new initiative and center for resilient cities and landscapes that works across the university. So that, in a nutshell, is the sequence of the semesters and the kind of programmatic emphasis that you'll experience when you come here. It's very exciting. Just a couple, um, just a slide. You can check this out online. I've included the web address above. Uh, slide on the Hudson Valley Initiative and how um, you can see the members of the faculty on the right-hand side 
and how uh, our coursework in the fall um, uh, urban design studio builds over time and has built over a series of years to develop a really strong set of relations with uh, government, uh, with local government, with NGOs, with nonprofits in the Hudson Valley, and is really kind of tuned into the real uh, questions that the Valley itself is facing. Um, we have a kind of, a, it's almost a rust belt phenomena where many of the cities in the Hudson Valley are struggling with kind of post-industrial economy and challenges of reconnecting to the Hudson River itself. Then a little more on that initiative at the global scale that connects with the, um, uh, the spring semester studio. This is a snapshot of the Center for Resilient Cities and Landscapes um, and some of the projects that it is undertaking. This is a re relatively new center that was funded with uh, some um, support from the Rockefeller Foundation and 100 Resilient Cities. And so the goal with this, as with the Hudson uh, Valley Initiative, is to really kind of connect the pedagogy that's happening inside uh, the, the, the sort of space of the studio with very real and applied questions of what's happening in, quote unquote, the real world and the way that projects are advanced and conceived. So now I just have a couple of images um, to show you some um, snapshots of student experiences in the summer semester, and then I'll just take you through the fall and then the spring again, just so you get a sense of what it's like to be here, because uh, it really is a fun and intense program, and it brings people together, it brings students together, uh, and um, students work um, in teams, faculty work in teams, and it's a really dynamic and, and, and wonderfully intense environment. So this is just an example of students out, uh, in, the, out in the world um, hearing stories from community members trying to understand what's um, at stake. In addition to being out on the, um, the sort of the, in the fabric of New York City and the five boroughs, we also have very intensive internal working sessions. This is an, a picture of our summer studio and, and some study models that uh, students made to help explore specific questions. Um, the, this is an example of a kind of a, re, of a review that takes place inside Avery Hall, student work, um, and kind of this um, jury type of panel that we use in design school to help advance and critic, you know, make a sort of a positive critique of the work and help students advance their ideas to the next level. Um, the summer semester is also characterized by an incredibly exciting course called Reading New York Urbanism. This course has been taught by Kasim Shepard, a, a renowned uh, faculty member here. And, um, and it also, uh, beyond the sort of work inside the studio, you will be learning um, this kind of art of storytelling and urban storytelling. Um, and Kasim um, and Nans uh, Voron, who's, who's um, pictured here, are really, have really ad um, advanced this um, uh, way of thinking about cities. Um, and so it's in really incredibly important and sort of foundational course. It enmeshes you inside the fabric of New York. It, it enables you to kind of hear stories from um, everybody from throughout the five boroughs and really kind of help define the idea of urban design through the concept of like listening and also through the scale of the neighborhood. And Nans, pictured here along with Trisha Martin, will be your summer studio coordinators for the spring. Here's another snapshot from the Reading New York Urbanism course of, of um, and uh, uh, more interviews, more um, interactions with people, um, whether that's in the city or, or outside the city. And um, a few notes on the fall semester, starting up in September. The fall semester has this Hudson Valley scale, and we often uh, launch this semester with a big boat trip up and down the Hudson River. Um, the student work, um, and now I'm just going to intersperse some student work, really begins to interrogate what it means to uh, have a new economy in the Hudson River Valley, to ask questions uh, about what's missing from the street, to engage citizenry in this kind of participatory uh, process of envisioning the city. Um, we uh, work in downtowns um, and also um, convene at larger events. This is uh, an image from the, what we had a, a year ago called the Hudson Valley Barge Meet, in which we convened uh, mayors and uh, uh, activists from around the Hudson River uh, on a barge to inquire and discuss um, opportunities for collaboration and for intervention. Another just photo of we get our feet wet 
and muddy when we uh, explore sites. This is an image of Poughkeepsie, uh, a water body and a project from Poughkeepsie, student project that begins to um, connect um, environmental activism, learning, and the educational system and the urban design of a neighborhood. Some students presenting their work here in a uh, format. Um, this is a format of a typical design critique uh, where we are um, inviting experts not only from within Columbia, but from the incredibly vast and exciting professional community of architects and urban designers that we can draw on uh, to um, provide a kind of critique of the work. So this is a pinup, for example, from the fall semester. Really um, active, a lot of people coming in and out and great way to meet other professionals in the New York area. And then so finally, some images of the spring semester. Um, here are some um, examples of cities that we've visited in the past uh, for the spring global studio um, from Accra to Vienna, um, a range of, of, of geographies, a range of challenges and uh, potentials. And so every year we take students um, in January to uh, two of these cities and um, on, a very, on a trip that's organized alongside um, a partner university and uh, alongside um, a unit of governance, usually the mayor's office of one of these cities. And so with, this is an image from our Rio de Janeiro workshop in, in Brazil. Um, you work while you're there, it becomes this um, very dynamic workshop in which we're trying to um, understand very quickly the, the challenge of that particular space and that particular city. Um, and we are focused on aiming to address climate change uh, through this active engagement of the joint built natural environment and also the collapse of biodiversity. So this is a quote from the IPCC, International Panel on Climate Change, that even limiting global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius requires rapid and far-reaching transition in land, energy, industry, buildings, transport, and cities. Sounds a lot like urban design. <laughs> so the, summer, the spring semester really positions urban designers as um, in being able to sort of mobilize research and design toward climate adaptive uh, cities. We've been doing this over the past years through the lens of water as a generative and connective force in urban design, one that really helps to um, think about um, future resilience in cities. And so all the cities that I've listed uh, before um, have a kind of a different uh, take on that particular work. I have some images uh, to show you. This is one from two years ago of um, Calcutta, India, and Amman, Jordan, uh, um, very two, two very different um, contexts, one uh, uh, facing water and inundation through sea level rise and subsidence, the other facing drought and extreme heat. And um, so some images uh, from those studios. And some of the, um, if you're interested in looking at this work, you can go onto the urban design webpage and sort of click down to publications. And you can click on any of these um, book covers to see a little bit more of the student work and to kind of understand how we approach these issues. Uh, so here's some images from our Amman uh, studio um, uh, with a, an, a geological expert. Um, looking both at issues of urbanization and also agriculture, water use and development, um, housing and, and agriculture on the left, um, interviewing farmers, interviewing local residents, um, centering kind of infrastructure more broadly at the center of urban design uh, discourse. And this is just an image of uh, the Jordan River Valley. It's for sort of past and kind of current uh, situation. And students really engage in this very um, exciting way of actually helping to visualize challenges uh, that these cities are facing. This is an infrastructure obsolescence map. So this image on the right has a shelf life of infrastructure um, and positioning um, and helping to these cities to visualize their conditions. Um, and then also helping cities through the, the, uh, the scale of the project um, scale that down and understand how this might manifest in the space of a small public square, say, in Amman. So um, our student work really spans um, the sort of infrastructural mapping abilities to very site-scaled, very specific, uh, textured materiality of public spaces. Here's another example of 
just a, um, a geographical analysis of the valley and how it connects, how urban uh, centers like water use in Amman impacts, for example, the plummeting uh, water levels as pictured here in the Dead Sea. Some other images from other studios. This is from Madurai, India. Uh, we have these informal work sessions when we're there in, this, in the cities, um, uh, bringing in uh, uh, professors from other schools. And you can see, well, that's me in the middle. And on the, the right hand of the image is Gita Mehta, one of the professors. Um, one of the images of student work from the uh, Water Urbanism Madurai studio. Um, another one uh, focused on the Vaige River. There's Gita <laughs> as a, an image from Calcutta with two students in a uh, rickshaw. Um, and so these trips are really exciting and sometimes the highlight of the year because they're so engaging and so interactive. And there's a, an image of student work also from Calcutta. Here's a, an image from our most recent trip to Pune, India. Um, and um, throughout these uh, these trips, we uh, meet not only city officials, but local activists and others trying to make change. So this is a gentleman who's spent his life uh, trying to preserve a sort of a section of the Mulamutha River, um, which we are studying today. So that kind of brings us up to the present date. And um, really, our goal is when you graduate from Columbia as a designer, as an urban designer, this is what you will be able to do. You'll be able to communicate, convene, analyze, visualize, organize, bridge disciplines, and understand how to act. And you will have a kind of a renewed understanding of the agency of the urban designer. Um, in a way, the urban, urban designer acts in a very different modality than, say, the architect or the landscape architect. Um, and one of the exciting kind of tenets or thought, thoughts around the studio and around this particular program is that great work emerges in the spaces between people. So even though we are really looking for students who have a strong personal agenda and want to advance their individual work, that is a, we have a huge amount of room for that. At the same time, we are looking uh, for students who like to collaborate and interface with a wide range of people. Because in order to make change in the urban environment, both of these kind of skill sets are necessary. So um, with that, I will conclude um, that set part of the session, and we will switch it over to some Q&A, so I'll join everybody at the table here. Hello, I'm David Smiley, the Assistant Director of the program, and I'll be uh, uh, helping uh, answer some questions with the students. Uh, we'll start with the students. I'm going to ask them uh, to introduce themselves, give a little background, and, um, and then uh, answer a couple of questions that they uh, noted from, from your list. Start with Richard, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Richard. I grew up in Vancouver, and I had a Bachelor's of Architectures from Carnegie Mellon University in 2016. Um, after graduation, I worked for an architectural firm, both as a junior architect and a digital technologist. And today, um, I, I'm in an urban design program because I've been really inspired um, um, with data-driven design and also urban analytics and I think mainly just hoping to create more impact beyond the building envelope. Hi everyone, my name is Alex. Um, I, came, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. I uh, did a five-year Bachelor of Architecture degree at Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Um, I worked as an architectural and urban designer as well as researcher um, at an integrated practice in Los Angeles for three years and then I came to Columbia. Um, similar to Richard, have some interest in kind of data and research um, in the city, really um, kind of looking past just the kind of built framework of the city and um, these kind of connections between, you know, different systems and cities. Um, and so that's why I'm here. Um, hi, everyone. Um, I'm Angela Krasostoma. I'm an uh, international student um, from Manila, Philippines. Uh, I got uh, my bachelor's in architecture um, in the, from the University of Santo Tomas back home. And um, I came here to Colombia to sort of um, get a sense of how urban design uh, is thought of um, right now and um, sort of to um, carry forward some 
um, new ideas for back home. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I'm just going to go over uh, a few of your questions, some of them short, some longer, and the students will uh, pitch in if they have anything to add. Uh, some, first simple question we have here is uh, how many students are there in the program? We have about 40 to 45 each year, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Um, it's hard to gauge, uh, but it's always uh, a good crowd, a good dynamic. Uh, the next question, uh, a little bit broader, and Kate touched on this to some degree about the regional studio, which we presume that person to mean the fall studio, uh, because we, we look at the region uh, as a setting for urbanization, as Kate uh, was discussing, that cities are part of a larger territory. Uh, we have chosen the Hudson Valley for a number of years as a site of research because there's cities, towns, farms, rivers, streams, uh, ecosystems, and we want to uh, explore all of those things uh, as a kind of intensive long-term project. And also, therefore, we, also, we, we created the Hudson Valley Initiative, as Kate mentioned, for to continue research and re outreach. And some of the themes that the studios have uh, taken on in different years include infrastructure, social justice, ecology, mobility, public health, and um, schools and food, uh, food justice. So we, we look at the, the Hudson River Valley, which is not a huge river valley by global standards, but it has a quite a complex history and a complex set of players and a complex set of opportunities and problems. And it sustains us uh, very nicely in the fall to enlarge the scope of our research with the students. <clears throat> Um, as Kate mentioned, uh, the traveling studio in the spring, uh, you will find out about in November of this year, and you saw the list of places, so uh, the world is our oyster, as the expression goes. Um, I would just add, yeah, that um, we, the studio sites are typically announced in October, okay. so you will hear about that in October. But and there's a wide range of geographies always uh, under consideration. And you'll be given enough time to make your plane reservations. <laughs> Um, the uh, next question is, is uh, really uh, complex and it's um, very important to us. What are the external agencies that are involved along with the studios? Um, as Kate showed you, um, we're very, very intent upon uh, collaborating with uh, governance and nonprofits and people um, uh, who live in places and community organizations in New York City, in the Hudson Valley, or wherever the traveling studio goes. So in New York City, not only do we work with, for instance, the Department of City Planning, some of our faculty are, on the are at the Department of City Planning, and you meet uh, city planners during the semester. Uh, we also work with community organizations from different boroughs in the city. Uh, so uh, you'll, you'll learn that there's a lot of players that you have to kind of face and learn from during the summer, as well as all the, the semesters. In the fall semester, uh, or an organization like Scenic Hudson, which advocates for both landscape and geography and social equality uh, in the Hudson Valley. Uh, we work with universities um, in the valley, <clears throat> depending on which city or town we're in. We work with uh, uh, people doing different kinds of development in, in the cities in the Hudson Valley. Um, and we also work with food justice organizations. We work with ecology organizations. Um, and then at the global scale, in the spring studio, uh, we work with mayors, governments, resilience officers, uh, just a whole host of players. So you'll have a review where there's 20 people from different uh, professions um, uh, that you will be learning from and talking to. So uh, there's just a lot of time with this kind of feedback and learning from uh, a lot of different um, points of view. Maybe um, just to add some a little more detail, maybe Alex and... Um Richard can chime in on this, that um, also there's different degrees to which I think we find ourselves with sort of one foot in speculation and one foot in reality, because that I think is the power of urban design. It's really this notion of trying to expand the envelope while working within existing um, sort of organizational forms. So both of uh, Richard and, and Alex are in the studio in Pune, India, and um, in that particular studio, we're trying to work literally in a way with existing engineers and existing um, city managers 
uh, to expand the space of a particular lens of, uh, in that case, a riverfront project. So do you guys want to chime in on that at all or challenges there and successes? Uh, yeah, sure. So, um, yeah, like Kate said, when we when we visited Pune, we were introduced by the chief resilience officer as well as someone from the Pune Municipal Corporation, and we learned kind of some of their plans to um, incorporate with the city's riverfront for the next um, twenty to thirty years. And a big part of that studio really is. Um, Understanding both sides of um, the story, you know, um, the side from the city's initiative, also um, the side of the story of the local people and as well as the local ecology. And the big, a big part of the studio has been how do we um, perhaps introduce a different way of urban design, maybe something that is more um, symbiotic and collaborative in general. And I find that really exciting. Yeah, I second everything Richard said, and I think it puts you in a unique position to really um, kind of moving forward in your career as well. You know, you can you have experience working with um, with a government, but also then kind of helping them to understand that maybe there's an alternative that is better for their city. So it's a unique opportunity to kind of um, test that as a student, but also it's a it's a really great skill set uh, moving forward as well. Okay, um, and what you're working in? Kanso in Vietnam. And um, what's, what we found very uh, uh, interesting in Cantho is that the, the issues they face are real, they're urgent. And um, in this studio, uh, we're working with real problems. Um, and so um, the, the sort of urgency and um, uh, advocacy um, to, to create real solutions um, is something that you get to experience in the studio. Um, and yeah. Great, thank you. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> yes, I think um, the goal is to, to uh, bring real-time work and real-time research uh, into the studio, but also, as Kate said, to allow room for experimentation and speculation because uh, in part it's in that uh, uh, tension between what exists and what might exist uh, that makes uh, it all very uh, fascinating and important. Uh, I'm gonna <coughs> get to a few other questions uh, that we'll also hear from the students about. Um, one person asks about uh, courses from other programs, um, uh, also outside of the, of the GSAP, but also at the university. <clears throat> so as Kate mentioned, we have four required classes in the summer semester, but in the fall and spring semesters, you have plenty of room to uh, take courses both in UD, in architecture, in historic preservation and planning, as well as else anywhere in the university. And we strongly encourage you to, to wander the university. Um, I'm just wondering if any of you folks have, have done that wandering? So during the fall semester, you do get a chance to, um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so during the fall semester, you do get a chance to um, take electives in the spring semester as well. Um, and um, I had the chance to uh, take a course on human rights in public space uh, with the Human Rights Institute. Um, but even, so you have a chance to take courses outside of GSAP. Um, but even within GSAP 2, um, you do get a chance to um, take classes that other um, departments in the university might share. Um, for instance, um, we, I'm taking a class with Alex, uh, Mapping Borderlands, um, this semester, and we are working with students from the anthropology department. So um, it's, it brings a different perspective um, to your study as well. And um, it makes for a broader um, experience. And in terms of seminars that you can take in addition to studio, both in fall and spring, um, there's a lot of flexibility there. So you can take a seminar potentially that's in the planning department or in a, you know, one that's not specifically urban design. So all of us, three of us, have taken um, courses that kind of surround urban design but are not specifically um, to the program. 
So for instance, in the fall, um, all three of us actually took a geographic information systems class, which is a really, really awesome course that um, kind of teaches you how to use GIS softwares, and then we can incorporate that into our studio work. So it's a really nice um, kind of addition to the work we're doing in studio. And um, that's most of, you know, most they've basically covered everything. But I think it's, uh, it's important to also hone in on the fact that these seminars are um, opportunities to work with people of different professions. Um, so I'm taking, uh, this semester I'm taking a seminar called Conflict Urbanism in Puerto Rico, where um, we're studying the aftermath of um, hurricanes in Puerto Rico. And um, aside from working with people from different programs, um, we actually had um, brought in econom uh, economists, also researchers and uh, public uh, advocates to um, discuss the topics and um, a lot of times it's beyond urban design, but what I found really useful was taking that class, it was a practice for me to understand how I can insert my skill sets into these complex um, issues. Okay. Um, and we will help you find uh, courses. We will show you how to navigate the university's uh, courses and registration systems uh, to make it easier because it's a big place with a lot going on. Um, uh, I think the, uh, the other um, piece of the, the puzzle uh, for many people has to do, the second to last piece, is about um, uh, workload and time management. So um, I'm going to immediately pass that along to the students because that's who you, you should be hearing from on that because obviously I think everything is possible. <laughs> well, I think having had a uh, professional degree in architecture, I think um, the intensity was expected. And to be quite honest, personally, um, coming here to pursue a um, post-professional degree, uh, this is the level of intensity that I'm looking for. But that being said, um, the first semester was definitely challenging. Um, I think uh, it has gotten better because mainly because I think everyone studio has um, grew so much more than we have in you know in a really short period of time, and uh, we've also I think we've also gotten more familiar with both the topic as well as the people that we're working with. So I noticed uh, significantly this semester that um, these collaborative works have became much smoother, much more collaborative, and. In general, I think it's just a, it's, it's, not a, it's not a hurdle, but something that you eventually develop. I think one of the greatest benefits, too, is that it's a 12-month program. So after 12 months, you have your master's degree. And for me, personally, that was one of the biggest draws of Columbia, was that um, it wasn't necessarily a two-year master's program, but in 12 months, um, I could leave the university uh, with a master's. So that, I think, is really um, quite a benefit of the program. And um, there is flexibility flexibility too, in terms of the intensity, um, as well as the sort of, there's enough space for you to explore um, your ideas, your projects, enough space um, in the program that new ideas would definitely emerge, new projects. Um, uh, definitely the summer is com totally intense and totally foundational. And then in the fall, you get um, a little more space to um, sort of explore other programs. Um, it, it will be as intense as you want it to be, um, given that in, during this term, you could um, opt for electives within GSAP and outside. And um, same with the spring semester. Um, but in the spring semester, too, um, other opportunities um, towards sort of professional development emerge. Um, it, um, there's career fairs, there's um, sort of um, building your portfolio. Um, and so um, taken all together, it is very intense, but it really sets you up um, well for the next years of your professional life. So I think you've, you've heard it clear, loud and clear, the summer is hard. 
um, and we're honest about it. And but you're still going to love it because it's going to be a, a flood of new things and new experiences. Um, and then what happens is students kind of figure it out and kind of get their feet on the ground, and then things proceed um, in a little less pressured way. But we still actually have a, a strong workload as well. I would just add that the one of the reasons why the summer is so intense is that. There's such a geographical diversity and such a diversity of ranges of kind of program types that people are coming from that there's a really intensive effort to sort of give everybody a baseline and that's what we that's what we aim to do and those courses are um, studio reading New York urbanism urban theory and software and what's exciting is this year I mentioned we have a new director of the summer is that all of those courses are now integrated into sort of one mega course <laughs> so all of the deadlines are coordinated and all of the um, the sort of coursework and pedagogy is is coordinated so that's an exciting kind of development for the this summer very much very much as you're traipsing around the city yes. all five boroughs not just Midtown um, a uh, couple of other questions and the nitty gritty for, uh, since it's only one year, and I'm sure the students will attest to how fast it goes, but the, the, the key point, uh, some people are asking about jobs, um, and that's a totally important question uh, that you should be asking. Um, for, in, in, in all cases, uh, we work with you, and the, the GSAP has a career services office, and they have events for portfolio reviews and firm meetings. And we work with them each year to try to beef up the, um, the offerings more unique to urban design and expand the range of people coming to the career fairs. Um, <clears throat> for international students, um, we worked very hard to extend the uh, STEM uh, system where it used to be if you, a STEM designated program had a one-year work permit for, for the U.S. Uh, recently we were able to extend it to three years so after you finish you can stay in the US and work for three years really exciting for all of us I'm, I'm sure you know um, you can get be getting jobs and people do get jobs in architecture offices planning offices urban design offices uh, and even engineering firms um, and then a lot of people work for public agencies. We have a lot of students, uh, US as well as international, going to work for the Department of City Planning, Department of Transportation, because you're meeting all these people during the summer, and some students keep up with them as well. And so that's a, an important opportunity. Other students um, work for NGOs and, and other kinds of organizations doing urban-related work. Uh, one student just emailed that they're working for a cultural agency in Dubai you know, managing their urban resources. Uh, another student um, uh, is in contact from, from Hong Kong where they're working in an architecture office looking at urban questions there. So it's a very um, dynamic uh, employment scene because our graduates are so educated, so well educated, not just in architecture, but in urbanism and in all sorts of interactions with community and government groups. Yeah. I would just add that um, the the degree is MSAUD, which is a Master of Science in Architecture and Urban Design. And so it's actually quite a flexible degree. Some students choose to go back into architecture or landscape architecture, but many students, I think, kind of take this less traditional path. And more and more, um, I would say we have so much interest, frankly, from the international community around, um, um, so we have um, graduates of our program at UN Habitat, um, and UNDEP, which is the Department of Environment, uh, more and more of the skill sets of our graduates are really meshing in a critical way with these sort of NGOs and nonprofit needs. So um, it's this kind of hybrid between design and advocacy and visualization, which has, I think, created a sort of a new stream of, of types of jobs in addition to the more um, sort of traditional professional offices that many of our graduates find themselves working in um, or, um, or city agencies like city planning, et cetera. We try to keep up with you, um, and that's, <clears throat> that's where we get some of our good stories from. Um, <clears throat> uh, some students asked about uh, assistance and research assistance pro, uh, positions. Um, and we have uh, teaching associate positions in the fall and the spring 
to which you can apply, and we try to spread those around among as many people as possible. Uh, there are other positions that you might find through career services uh, here in the building in, in GSAP. Um, and again, uh, the goal is to get as many people as possible uh, doing something if they can. There's no guarantees, but we, we do our best to, to uh, give people um, the opportunity to work uh, outside the curriculum and, um, and learn through uh, different kinds of jobs in and around the school. Um, <clears throat> one other aspect uh, that um, some people uh, ask about, which has to do with language, and uh, the way um, how international students can uh, learn how uh, we work in American universities and GSAP in particular. So in the summer we have some, <clears throat> excuse me, we have some uh, voluntary uh, programs that uh, help students with some workshops on writing, on language, on group work. Uh, we're looking to in include one on time management because we realize that <clears throat> the educational systems around the world are, are very, very different. And so we want people to be able to, to kind of jumpstart and get, get going here in New York, uh, understanding how G Columbia University works. So we provide those uh, voluntary workshops in the first uh, few weeks of, of the summer. It's also a lot about um, getting students to understand how to work with others and how to communicate with others in a, in a, in a uh, fair-minded and generous sort of way. <clears throat> because as, uh, as um, you know, it's a lot of work and there's a lot of pressure, so working with others um, is a skill you, you must um, learn uh, uh, along the way. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, so let me see, I have one more um, bit, uh, uh, kind of detail, but someone asked about internships. Um, and I'm sorry to say that GSAP um, doesn't offer that many internships for <clears throat> urban design because it's a one-year program. There are teaching assistant and other um, research positions available, uh, but a technical internship is, is something that um, the GSAP, like I say, you're only here for a year, so um, it, it doesn't quite work out. The I would say, too, that... <clears throat> While you're here for a year, there, I mean, I think the students can attest to this, there is a mind-boggling array of lectures, workshops, every, you know, we're <coughs> here in um, Wood Auditorium, um, twice a week you have almost na major lectures in this hall, um, in addition to lunchtime lectures from the urban design program, planning program, historic preservation, we all have also departmental specific lectures. So I would say um, my advice to all of you incoming students would be take advantage of every moment inside the school while you are here. And, um, and then when we start to um, hit the end of the spring semester, then we help you with portfolio prep. But you have such a, it's such a you know, magical time for that one year while you're here. And there's so much to absorb and to participate in that the idea of um, 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 an additional internship in a private company seems to be not the best use of your time. Um, so just a little note on that. Um, I will also add that um, some of these opportunities come from your own your personal connections. And um, sometimes they come from the reviews where um, a lot of individuals from private companies as well as uh, public agencies um, come and visit your work. Um, like I know, for example, a couple of my um, colleagues in class have um, landed uh, part-time jobs based on um, the people they've met and mm -hmm. reviews. So that's also a opportunity. Yeah, yeah one, one detail, um, the, the Hudson Valley Initiative um, uh, for instance, will um, get students to assist periodically. So there's a lot of, of uh, ebb and flow with um, different kinds of, of helping out. And um, uh, so it's a, it's a very active place. But as Kate said, and I want to reiterate, um, it's a very busy schedule with the, the number of things you can be doing here. And so your year is precious. It's very precious. And if um, of course, it's a stretch to be here for everyone, I'm sure, uh, but it's, um, it's a precious time because there's so many uh, 
things to think about, to participate in, to learn about, uh, and courses and activities and organizations. So um, it's really an exciting time. And, and perhaps one of the best things is that you will, you will be, as we started with, you will be in New York City. Um, and even though we send you out into the city as part of your courses routinely, um, you will want to spend some time on your own exploring New York City. So leave yourself some time for that uh, if you can. Great. I mean, maybe I'll just make some some closing remarks um, around just trying to sort of summarize um, and and thank thank you students for your help in in um, trying to sort of add some detail to this future incoming student experience. Um, I guess I really just wanted to emphasize how amazing our faculty is. Um, we have an incredible group of faculty who are working inside the studios and who are also teaching you seminars. Um, and so say this, uh, more than any other program, I think you'll have a, a, a very um, collaborative and kind of uh, back and forth with our, our faculty um, as I mentioned, Nans Boron and Tricia Martin, um, an architect and landscape architect respect, respectively, and urban designers both, will be your studio coordinators for the summer semester. Um, and um, during that summer time, you have just real, three and incredible teachers who are uh, also focusing on reading New York urbanism, um, theory course, and um, uh, software. Um, and then in the fall, you'll have your fall studio will be led by Kaya Kuhl, whose um, hallmark is kind of community-driven design. She's an incredibly experienced long-term teacher in the program, and um, she'll be coordinating um, the group of faculty for the fall semester. But in addition to that inside studio faculty, you are able to take seminars with um, sort of world experts in topics, including Richard Pluns uh, for housing and the history of housing. Um, this year we had Anthony Acciavati, who uh, is the author of Ganges Water Machine, incredible book that um, several of the students mentioned being interested in research and spatial. Um, uh, design and data design. So his book, Ganges Water Machine, pulls together research and uh, data design uh, around the Ganges and has won uh, major book awards. We have Dilip Dakuna, who's a global scholar of, of water and sort of post-colonial studies. Uh, Laura Kurgan, uh, who's um, developed a kind of incredible uh, body of knowledge around um, spatial information and uh, kind of criticality. Um, Gita Mehta, also in the spring semester, who is a, a kind of globally renowned figure uh, around issues of social capital and, and gender um, studies. So um, in addition to you know, the, 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 the sort of incredibly um, interactive peer experience, you will also um, have access to uh, the incredible range of faculty inside um, the urban design program. And then just finally to conclude, I think what's so exciting about our, our year-long our year uh, program here is that it's a chance to learn more broadly about the city, to kind of expand the lens, uh, expand your agency as a designer. I also find more and more um, as the years go by that students find it as an opportunity to sort of transform themselves and their own identity um, after going through this program. You will have 40 very close friends <laughs> after you graduate from this program. Um, and uh, you will kind of uh, come out of the other side, frankly, a changed person in the best possible of ways, like knowing yourself better, knowing how you interact better um, with others, understanding your strengths and your weaknesses, and really, um, I think what we try to do is help give you the tools and help sort of help you sense your shape your own um, sense of purpose. Uh, so when you graduate, you're, you'll be out there in the world um, influencing kind of a more positive uh, built environment and a sort of uh, more kind of equitable and environmental sort of sense of what it means to be an urban designer. So I think with that, we will close. I, we've checked off all the questions on the list, but um, I wanted to just emphasize that you can um, email me at ko2111 um, uh, at columbia.edu and david at ds210. So, um, so feel free to follow up um, with email questions. Uh, but for now, we are so excited for you to come here. Um, if you're coming to the open house, see you then. And if not, feel free to email with questions. So thanks a lot, everybody.